All right, so as a young immigrant coming from Mexico, um, I experienced history in two different countries. Um, so I got my insight on Mexican history until I was about 12 years old. And then, um, you know, I learned all about how Spanish people brought disease and they enslaved a lot of natives made them build churches, made them um, Catholic and stuff. Um, and I also learned that Spanish people um, took gold from Mexico and brought it over to Spain. So that was what I learned. Um, I knew that, you know, Spanish people had not been the best people, the best type of people. And I also learned while taking classes in Mexico about the different battles that took place. Um, after you know mexico was colonized and whatnot and i also learned about indigenous history um i know that i have very close uh, roots to uh, indigenous aztecs i believe so so um people in my town have very native features and it's very normal for people to familiarize themselves with indigenous history whereas here in the United States what I do remember was um, how they teach history um, it's very one-sided you know we don't really get an insight on native history here in the United States um, so fast forward to 2009 when I moved to California I started the seventh grade here so during middle school and high school i recall learning about world war one world war two uh world history u.s history but no significant information about mexico or um latinos in u.s history at all um um throughout middle school and high school i learned how um the united states became a country and uh, how English uh, people came to America seeking freedom of religion and land uh, to, you know, have a better life. And in my head, as a Latino, I thought of it as, well, it's very close to what uh, a lot of Latinos move here into, United, into the United States for, you know, seeking freedom and a better life um but you know for some odd reason um i didn't know why it was such a bad thing for latinos to come to the united states this is coming from the mexican perspective um you know learning history in the united states and as a seventh grader all through high school that was my main question like why is it so bad for Latinos to come to America and when English people come to the United States seeking the sa almost the same things that we seek they're not you know rapists they're not terrorists they're not all these negative stereotypes they are that they are giving to Latinos and Mexicans so that was my you know one of the questions that I had as a kid learning history here in the United States. So it wasn't until I took a series of Spanish classes for native speakers with Mrs. Ortega that my knowledge and appreciation for Latinx representation grew. Um, I learned about the Chicano movement, um, the LA walkouts, the civil rights movement, as well as the United Farm Workers movement with Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta as the leaders. Um, so that's when I started getting a little bit of history as far as Latinos here in the United States. And it was really interesting to see the contrast of what was being taught in history textbooks and what was being taught in, let's say, a Spanish class. I didn't understand why they would leave it up to a Spanish department that is teaching language, the historical side. You know what I'm saying? So that's like another of the question, another one of the questions that I had um, while growing up. And um, the turning point and the, I guess, when 
when I woke, uh, when all those questions were, when the, those two questions that I had, the, the why Latinos were seen as bad for coming to the United States, that was one. And then the other one was, um, you know, why history was not including Latinos and why were Spanish teachers teaching history that should be should, should be te being taught in a classroom. So that was, um, those questions were answered once I took this class. Um, uh, it, this course opened my eyes to the racist systemic ideologies that trace back to documents from the past. So there were certain documents that um, described, um, let's say, Spanish people. Uh, in this case, one of those documents was um, a brief account of the devastation of the Indies. This document was written by Las Casas. And in this document, um, Bartolomé Las Casas uh, describes what was happening um, during the colonization of Mexico and America, right? So in this brief, he uses a lot of exaggerations to bring attention to what was happening. And so this book um, was used by different countries and English people to, to like, what's it called? To make Spain worse than it was. And in a way, this same document is being used by the United States to look at Spanish people and Latinos included as these savages, these people that are rapists, terrorists and such because of the exaggerations that came from books like um, Las Casas. So that was when it clicked, you know, wow, this is, this is why um, Latinos are not being included because of what the English people wanted to look like. They wanted to look like the good people. So of course they're going to be, um, you know, educating people in a way that is going to benefit them in the long run. And um, that is why the system is so rigged and so one-sided. So thank you to this class. I, um, you know, that answer, that question was answered. And another one of the documents that I recall from this reading the, from this course was the document by it, it was an article by Sleater it's titled state curriculum standards and shaping and the shaping of student consciousness um, and then in this article it was basically about the curriculum like a, a state adopted curriculum appears to be multicultural on the surface but in reality it has been proven to be useless Given that in states like California, it's it has a really big number of a minority. So this narrative of uh, not including Latinos in the historical part of history um, makes it look like, you know, it, it doesn't really fit with the amount of, with the demographics. So it has been, um, you know, many, many cities have, opted out of including certain textbooks because of things like these. They don't fit the demographics of um, certain communities and, you know, it just doesn't seem right to be teaching those types of, um, that type of history for Latinos that are already seen as less. So um, that was really interesting and it brought me, uh, it made me think of, you know, what could we, what could we do or what can be done for people to start changing their mindset, including white folks. So, um, so yeah, um, history does affect Latinos because they are, they are scared to fit any negative stereotype. Like, I think that that's the reason why a lot of Latinos uh, don't want to go to protest because they don't want to be labeled as, you know, loud and disruptive and stuff like that. So it's things like that that may prevent us as Latinos and minorities from achieving our full potential. Um, and then lastly, 
I think students should be required to learn about the black legend in detail during high school because high school is still a lot of like there's a lot going on in high school but I feel like it's that time before adulthood when you have to really face like difficulties and having an understanding of the world or a, a, a in-depth understanding of what the system is like before entering the, the, the big world would be really benefiting for students. Um, and I think it could help them move, uh, become more familiar with how diverse the US population is and learning about other struggles will make them aware of their privilege and hopefully it will improve the way Latinos are viewed and treated um, in the US. So yes, that is um, what I learned from this course and I think it was really eye-opening and I, I enjoyed the class.